Good evening. Good evening. Praise the Lord. It's been a challenging moment. Trying to set things up this evening. Having some glitches. But nevertheless, got everything set up. Reason for the late start. But nevertheless, we are going to have a great time tonight with the lesson. God is in control of everything that we're going through. We need to let God arise in our situation, no matter what problems arise in your life. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. God has the victory over the enemy. You have the victory over the enemy. No matter what you go through, you have to maintain a positive attitude regardless of how you feel, regardless of what's going on in your life at the moment. But truly, God is great. His mercy endures forever. Welcome tonight to the Bread of Life through the Night Bible class. Amen. Amen. Welcome, welcome, welcome those of you who are joining in tonight. God bless you. I hope the, uh, others will see this lesson later on today as you know, or tomorrow as I post it on YouTube. So I will be putting this lesson on YouTube that I'm doing tonight as well. So you stay encouraged. Know that God is on your side. He reigns victoriously in your life, in your situation, no matter what you go through. Greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. And one thing that's so important is when you're going through challenges and tests, don't allow your tests to define your attitude. Don't let it define your character because just because things become testy and frustrated in your life, you still got to put a praise on it. Let God arise and his enemies be scattered. For the word says, thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus. You are victorious. I am victorious because Jesus reigned. He's conquered all of our foes and he gave us the victory. So you stand fast in liberty for Christ has made you free. Amen. No woman knows too busy. Good Lord. Excuse me one second. Amen. Amen. I want to start a new lesson today. But before I do, I'm going to read a devotion and go into prayer. And then after the prayer, I'm going to start a new lesson and I'll tell you what the title is when I'm done. Amen. So our devotion tonight is this rest with me a while. Rest with me a while. You have journeyed up a steep, rugged path in recent days. The way ahead is shrouded with uncertainty. Look neither behind you nor before you. Instead, focus your attention on me, your constant companion. Trust that I will equip you fully for whatever waits you on your journey. I designed time to be a protector for you. You couldn't bear to see all your life at once. Though I am unlimited by time, it is in the present moment that I meet you. Refresh yourself in my company, breathing deep draughts of my presence. The highest level of trust is enjoy me moment by moment. I am with you, watching over you wherever you go. And that is an awesome devotion, has a lot of meaning in it, because we're going through life with uncertainties, we have issues that arise in our lives, we have uh, troubles that come in our lives. Instead of taking all your energy and focusing on the negative thing, why don't you focus on the Lord? Allow Him to consume your thought life. To give you the ability to overcome the challenges that you face. He says time is divine, designed to be a protection for you. So God promises to protect you every minute, every second of the day of your life. But it only happens when you focus on him. You can't bear to see your life at once, all at once. Because if God were to show you all the things that would happen in your life, you probably faint and give up on life and just want to die. But he promises that he's unlimited with time. He's with you in time. He shows up on time. And he's right there in your life 
guiding you through time. So refresh your moment. Refresh your mind. Begin to just rest in his presence. The highest level of trust is to enjoy his presence moment by moment. Amen? Moment by moment. And God promises to be with you, watching over you wherever you go. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Hallelujah. So let's go into a word of prayer, then we'll get into our lesson tonight. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. We praise you for being good and merciful to us children, God. Father, many troubles come in our lives, sometimes distractions, even dealing with technology, God, sometimes become frustrating when things doesn't work the way you want it to work. But I thank you for the spirit of patience, God. When things throws us for a loop that's beyond our control, instead of becoming upset about it, becoming angry about it, just praise you. And I guarantee you, Father, you call things to work out for the good. And I come, Father, this evening just to say thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit working in our lives, oh God, to will and do according to your good pleasure. It's your pleasure, God, to be glorified in our lives. It's your pleasure, Lord God, to be lifted up in our troubles and circumstances of life. And I ask, oh God, that you remove the business from the day. Allow our minds to focus on you, oh God, that we'll hear a rhema word that will help shape our future and our destiny, God, and change our lives and change our minds. Forgive us for our sins of trespasses, knowing, unknowing, God, sin, those who sin against us, forgive us, God. Those we sin against, forgive us, God. That we have nothing, oh God, to hinder us from receiving from you a word of life that will transform our hearts, oh God, to become more like you. I ask that you will be glorified, be exalted, be lifted up. I pray healing, God, over uh, crummy cold, oh God, Pastor Terry and Jesse, God. I pray healing over the, all those who are afflicted on today, oh God, in the name of Jesus. And my friend, Monica, daughter, Nini, we speak healing, God. We believe there's power in the blood of the Lamb. We believe that the anointing destroys the yoke. The anointing, Father, has the ability to transform our bodies, oh God, in infirmities to being well by the Spirit of the living God. We ask that you would be glorified and exalted. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. I tell you, it was a challenge this evening. My God, was it a challenge. Trying to set up this technology thing, glitching, screens bouncing, and all this crazy mess. But I tell you, I just said, okay. I just rested in the Lord. Lord, you handle it. And the Lord just told me, just be patient. It's going to work out. So hopefully things will work out this evening. Don't have any glitches in our screens. But I pray that you would find yourself gravitating to the presence of the Lord through this word tonight. I began to read this book a while ago. And in this book, it's a powerful book because it talks about a three-strand cord not easily broken. A three-strand cord not easily broken. And it deals with witchcraft as well as bondage. And the enemy uses bondage in our lives to destroy us and distract us. To keep us from walking in the freedom that Christ has for us. And I encourage you tonight to really focus on the Spirit of God. As I read through this book tonight, as I always do, read through the book and um, begin to highlight certain things that's in the chapters. To give us a revelation and an understanding of the Word of God. Amen. So you bear with me tonight as we go through this lesson. Allow the Spirit of God to feed you like a shepherd feeds his flock. I know God is going to do that by his Spirit to empower you to keep standing on this Word in the midst of adversity, trials, and tests. Because we all have some challenges in our lives that we can't bear on our own accord. But God has the power and the ability to do that. But it's up to you as a child of God to really begin to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Allow him to empower you with the word of this book that will help strengthen, encourage, destroy the power of the enemy on your mind and on your heart in our lives tonight. 
is breaking the threefold demonic cord. How to discern and defeat the lies of Jezebel, Athaliah, and Delilah. That's what we're going to talk about tonight. So I'm going to go to the chapter one in the book. I'm not going to go to the introduction because it's pretty lengthy. But I'm going to start out in chapter one. If you don't have this book, you can get this book in the Kindle version or you can find it on Amazon. The Threefold Demonic Cord. Breaking the Threefold Demonic Cord. And that's what we're going to trust God to do in our lives and lives of others to break the power of the enemy to set his people free. So the scripture tonight, it says to go to Ecclesiastes. So let me go to Ecclesiastes. Give me a second. I'll pull up the Bible on here. So I really believe that God is going to speak to you tonight by his spirit. And the enemy is going to be defeated through the word of God today. Ecclesiastes, let's see, Ecclesiastes, hallelujah, glory to God, thank you Lord Jesus, we glorify you, we praise you, just give me one second, I'm doing two things at the same time, so just bear with me, okay, so Ecclesiastes chapter 4, Verse 12, and it says, if, And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and a threefold cord is not easily broken. Do you understand what this is talking about? This passage of scripture is letting you know how important it is for two to stand together against the demonic stronghold of the enemy. Because I found out in my own personal life that when I'm going through certain bondages in my life and trying to break free from certain things, I can't do it by myself. I have to have an intercessor, someone who can pray me through the standing gap with me and we can stand together against the power of the enemy. That's why it says, if, and if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. So you, we can stand together against the attack of the enemy that comes against us. When we believe by faith in the word of God, that the word of God will put the enemy to a flight in our lives. But we don't believe the word of God. How do you expect to overcome the attack of the enemy in your life? You cannot overcome without knowing the word of God. That's why it's very important as a child of God to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman need not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. If you don't divide the word of truth, how do you expect to break free from the attacks of the enemy in your life? Okay? So let's go back to our book. What was that? The grating sound shook me to the core. I came to a complete halt as I attempted to locate the noise. It sounded like metal grinding against metal. A heavy latch being permanently fixed in place and the sense of being locked in a cage and confined. Immediately, I began to feel the sense of dread, hopelessness, and despair. And I glanced toward the television for an explanation of the sound, but it did not come from that direction. The noise continued to resonate in my mind, and I soon realized that I heard something in the spiritual realm. Alarmed, I asked the Lord to identify the noise, and its, its significance. Suddenly, a sense of urgency, urgency overwhelmed me, and I heard the words, demonic lockdown. That's deep. When you find yourself spending time in the presence of the Lord, 
sometimes the Holy Spirit reveals extraordinary things in the spirit to you that no one else can hear and you hear the sound of different things that's taking effect in the spirit realm. Just like the author he was writing, he says, as he heard the sound, it sounded as metal grinding against metal. So I come to let you know tonight that we have to be praying for clarity and understanding when the Holy Spirit reveals you certain sounds that come into your life. Amen. Don't allow the enemy to distract you from walking in your purpose that God has for you. Because so many times we get distracted, distorted, because we don't understand what's going on in our lives. Amen. So God wants you to be aware tonight that there are sometimes things that are going to resonate in the spirit realm that the flesh cannot comprehend. But it's up to you to realize that, hey, I can't do this on my own. It has to be the Spirit of God and allow the Spirit of God to manifest His, His Word in your heart, in your mind, to bring strength to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. And I guarantee when you do that, the Word will become alive to you and God will begin to show you things that you've never seen before that can help transform your life from darkness to light. Let's go back to the book. And it said, Then I realized the sound. It was a clamoring there was a vast number of prison doors that prison doors make as they slide across metal grinds or grids and lock prisoners into their cell. Though I do not fully understand the dynamics of the prison confinement, I am aware that a prison lockdown is more than being confined for one night. The process involves an all-day confinement in which no one can enter or leave, and all inmates' movements is strict, restricted. During lockdown, no outsiders are allowed entrance, even ministers of the gospel. Any activity that alarms the prison system causes an immediate lockdown. The inmates are completely restricted until the lockdown is lifted. I came instantly, I instantly became aware of Satan's plan to lock us into our old patterns of destruction. God began to unfold revelations concerning a threefold core of destruction that the enemy has planned against his church to lock it down. Isn't that something how the enemy has, has attacked it to use against you as a child of God to keep you in confinement? And when a lockdown has taken place in your life, it restricts movement you only can stay in a certain place without having to be confined with with shackles and chains and today is is, is uh <coughs> cuffs with those, those uh with those, those uh handcuffs that's what i'm looking for so when you're confined because of behavior patterns are out of order sometimes they put you in a restraint or they put you in handcuffs and lock you in a cell where you can't harm yourself or anyone else. And that's what the enemy wants to do with God's people is lock you down. <coughs> Excuse me. Where you can't do anything on your own accord until the lockdown has been lifted. I've been to prison before where I visited many inmates during prison ministry years ago. And I found out that many times during prison ministry, the inmates, when we come to preach the gospel, they had to come in a form line to the place where we're going to be meeting, and they were guarded by the security that were there in the prison system. And they was not allowed any touching, but you can pray for them from a distance. And so many times the enemy wants to do that to God's people is get you in a place where he prevents your movement. So you know your calling, you know the plan God has in your life, and the enemy knows exactly what to do to lock you down. So it's up to you to make a decisive decision. I will not be held in captivity to any, any chains and shackles by the enemy. 
<coughs> Excuse me. Where this cough coming from? But the devil's a lie. Let's go on a little further. I instantly became aware of Satan's plan to lock us to our old patterns of destruction. God began to fold the revelation concerning the threefold core of destruction that the enemy has planned against the church to lock it down. With this lockdown, we are chained and imprisoned to the past with no hope of freedom. That are preached by itself. Because the enemy knows what entices you, what baits you, what lures you into the entrapment that he has for you for your demise. And it's up to you as a child of God to spend time in the presence of the Lord where God reveals to you what it is the root cause in your life for certain behavior patterns, certain things that trigger anger in your life, certain things that cause you to have abnormal behavior, and God reveals it by his spirit. And the Holy Spirit shows you what it is that holds you in captivity to the past. <coughs> Excuse me. Many times, a lot of things happen in our lives because of familiar spirits and ancestry spirits. And what I mean by that is spirits from our ancestors, from our family members who died years ago, the stronghold never been broken, the habits never been stopped, so it's been transferred from one generation to the next generation to the next generation, which continues to leave bondage in the lives of our family members, even your own personal life, to things that they dealt with in the past. They could have died back in the 50s and the 60s, but the same habits and the same strongholds that held them in captivity were transferred through familiar spirits. And when you engage with those familiar spirits, those same tactics that any use to entice and lure and bait them to destroy them it's the very same things he used today in our lives to hold us in captivity. And until you recognize what is just, for example, let me use an example. Just like homosexuality. Everywhere you turn on the television, you hear on the radios, you walk in the streets, you go to shopping centers, you see the gay movement. And I'm not trying to talk about anybody. But you see these things taking place. Our minds are being programmed to accept it. So if you have had the tendencies in your life, that happened because of the things of the past. From someone in your ancestry, you may have dealt with the same spirit, and your parents knew about that spirit, but never warned you of that spirit. So that same spirit comes along through an airway, through some other avenue to entice you. The word says in James, this all that in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So the enemy used the same tactics from generations before you to entrap you. And before you know it, you're in a prison of the same thing they dealt with because they never taught you how to overcome that spirit. Spirits have violated your life because your parents did not guard you to protect you from those spirits. So God is showing us today we got to pray. We got to learn how to pray. Those spirits offer our mindset. In order for the heart to change, for desires to change, the mindset has to change. If the mindset does not change, how do you expect your life to change? Because there will be no change until we get to the place in ourselves to recognize that God wants us to change. I cannot change until God gets to my mindset to change me and allow him to change me without resistance, without rebellion, without allow myself to be lured by the enemy and snared by my own words. 
we speak damnation over our own selves from generations before us. Just like in generations before, you might have had drunk, drunkards in your family. Might have had perversion in your family. Might have adultery in your family. Whatever the issue was in your family, molestation, doesn't matter what it was from the past. If you don't identify, we talked about this when I taught the book, The Bait of Satan. If you don't identify what the issue is in your life, how do you expect God to set you free? Think about it. I cannot be free if I don't know what I need to be free from. Because a lot of times we become comfortable living in the familiar spirit. We get comfortable living with the, the sin of the ancestry because they never dealt with it. They brushed it under the rug. So years later, you come along and as you begin to grow up and mature, you find yourself having unusual desires because it was something that was in the bloodline. And I taught a the, the, uh, couple of weeks ago, for Father's Day, I taught about, in my message, the covenant seed. Because there's a covenant seed that God has placed in our lives. And that's the seed of the Messiah. But it all started in Genesis, when God created man in his own image and likeness. And the enemy perverted everything through the bloodline. All the way through Noah, when God had to flood the earth, destroy his creation, except for Noah and his family and two of every creature, male and female. Then God had to reappropriate the earth, bring forth Adam, bring forth Isaac, Jacob, Abraham, all these different people from the past to reproduce the covenant seed to bring forth the lineage of the divinity covenant through David, which brought forth his lineage, the Messiah, or the Messianic seed. That covenant, which brought redemption. Without the shedding of blood, there would never have been redemption. But because of the covenant seed, God says we were engrafted in the Abrahamic covenant. We were Gentiles. We were ostracized. The covenant wasn't even for us. When God promised Abraham to be the father of many nations and that all the kindreds of the world are going to be blessed, the kingdom is going to come forth through his lineage, that everybody can receive a blessing through his lineage. Only because he had faith and belief. You have to have faith in God's word. Because he said the children of Israel, the covenant was for them but they became like wild olive branch because of their rebellion and the sin in their lives. So God says, so I'm going to give the same covenant to the Gentiles, meaning you and me. And he says, I'm going to cause them to inherit the Abrahamic covenant, the promises that was for the Jews and not the Gentiles. And because of the love of God, God says that the enemy came along even in our timeline to pervert the covenant seed, to prevent us from living and receiving the benefits of the covenant seed. But I come to let you know tonight that when we get done with this book, things are going to break in your life. It's going to break in your bloodline. It's going to break those ancestry and familiar spirits in your life. It's going to set you free in your mentality by the power of the Holy Spirit. But you got to believe it for yourself. Amen. Let's move on a little further. We must realize however that if the enemy is planning a lockdown, then it must be our season to break out into an enlarged area 
it is our destiny to be fruitful and to multiply. Look at what the Lord has planned for you. Sing, O childish woman, break forth into a loud and joyful song. O Jerusalem, even though you never gave birth to a child, for the woman who could bear no children now has more than all other women, says the Lord. Enlarge your house, build an addition, spread out your home, for you will soon be bursting at the seams. Your descendants will take over other nations and live in their cities. Isaiah 54th chapter, verse 1 through 3, in the New, New Living Translation, emphasizes my precious one. Did you hear what God has stated concerning your destiny? Notice the prophetic declaration he has made over your life. Break forth. God says you will break out of your old places and launch into new. I believe that word. I receive that word. The prayer of Jabez. When Jabez prayed unto the Lord, he said, Oh Lord God of Israel, bless me indeed. Enlarge my territory. Expand my borders. Let no evil come near me and let me not be pained. And it says, and the Lord God granted him his request. God will grant you the request of your heart when you believe with your heart, mind, soul, and will what God has for you, it is for you. He said, you're going to break out. In other words, the captivity that you might be in at this moment in your life. Some might be stuck in depression, might be stuck in hopelessness, might be stuck in regret and guilt of the past. It doesn't matter the condemnation, what people try to put on you for the mistakes you made in your life. God says today is a time, hallelujah, glory to God, to break forth out of your old places and launch into the new. He told Isaiah, to Isaiah prophesy. Tell the children of Israel, <coughs> excuse me, behold, I do a new thing. Will you not know it? When it spring forth, I will make a roadway in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. God says, I'm doing something new. So the old ways of thinking, the old ways of living, God says today is a time to break forth. Arise and shine for thy light has come and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Say so break forth into a loud and joyful song, O Jerusalem. So you got to make a loud sound, a declaration for yourself that I would no longer be held in the captivity. I would no longer be held back from the promises and blessings God had to me. The devil is a lie. I would not be defeated. My children are blessed. My family is blessed. My bloodline is blessed. My descendants are blessed because I am blessed. And God says, I'll be blessed coming in and blessed going out. Say, everything about me will be blessed. Read Deuteronomy chapter 28. Read the whole chapter. You'll find out the promises and the judgment of God. You obey God. He lists a whole lot of things, a blessing that will happen for you. But if you rebel against God, he lists a whole list of judgments and punishment that will come upon you because of your sin and iniquity of the heart. Then he goes and says, enlarge your house. I love this part. Get ready for something really awesome. God is adding a new room to your home. Get ready, get ready, get ready for something extraordinary 
something that's supernatural, something that's ex powerful and explosive. God is adding new rules to your home. So you need to believe that. That God can expand your territory. He can enlarge your border. I remember years ago, my dad first bought his first house. He added an extra room to the house. Because he believed in expansion. And at that time, he was a drunkard. He wasn't serving God. But then when God got a hold of him and changed his life, he stopped the drinking, stopped the partying and all the stuff he was doing, and started focusing on the plan that God had for his life. His father was a pastor, and his father taught him how to be a preacher and live for God. And my father became one of the greatest legends of the gospel to this very day. Because he trusted God. And he started building in his own home before God started building in his life. And when God started building his life, he had a vision. When we moved to Gary, Indiana, become the pastor of the Pilgrim Missionary Baptist Church, he started a cell phone company. That didn't work. Then he had another vision to start a clothing business. And that expanded. And God gave him more than he asked for in that business. He was able to travel the country, go on the clothing shows and get in different types of merchandise to sell in his store. Because he believed in the promise of God. You have to believe for yourself. Whatever your vision is today, he said, write the vision, make it plain, that all who may see it may run with it. Though the vision tarry, is yet for a point in time, but it will surely come to pass. But it's up to you to obey and believe. I remember the old song back in the days of when I was a child, Trust and obey. There's no other way. Trusting in Jesus. There is no other way. And that's what God would do when you trust in him. He will cause an expansion, an explosion in your spirit and in your life. Then it says spread out. Expect great expansion. You believe that tonight, that God can expand you? He can take you worldwide. I never thought doing Facebook Bible study for the church over three years ago would cause an expansion worldwide. People see my video all around the world. And sometimes they comment. Sometimes they don't. But sometimes I get responses on YouTube. Because somebody around the world saw this video. And it blessed them. Only because of the obedience. Because when I first started doing this, I didn't want to do it. When the pastor first approached me and asked me to do a Bible class during the pandemic for the church, before the pandemic started, he said, I want you to do a Bible class for the church. At the same time, I was believing God to go on the radio. And I had wrestled in my spirit to not do the Bible class. But then God reminded me that early that year, I prayed about going on the radio. And God says, your obedience, you never know how it would open up the avenue for you to be on the radio. Because I lifted the voice of the Spirit, I called the pastor, yes, I'll do it. And I started doing the Bible class in 2019, April. Started doing the Bible class. Not long after that, a few days later, 
my pastor who I'm on the radio with today called me and asked me to be on the radio with him. And I thought about that. I said, what if I had not obeyed God? I would have never been on the radio today. So I've been on the radio now for four years because I trusted in God. And I thank God for the spirit of obedience because he promised me in my vision when I wrote it that God enlarged my territory and expand my borders. I believe you're going to do this. I don't know when, but I know you're going to do it. And I prayed over that vision. I read that vision many days and believed God for that vision to come to pass, even for marriage. I believed God for that. I thought the last relationship was the one, but it wasn't. God had a plan. And I'm still believing God that one day to get married to the young lady put in my life. And I thank God for my obedience. Because I said, if I had to obey God, I would never be as blessed as I am today with the relationship, with the finances, with the church, with the pastor I serve under, and the radio ministry. And check this out. Way back in 2000, I started, I entered, no, it was before 2000, I started an internet radio program. I was on the radio on Blog Talk Radio. Dot com. I was on that program for a whole year while I do a podcast every week, sometimes twice a week. Did it for a whole year. And then I stopped. But every now and then, the Spirit of God said, go back on there and do a show. And I'll go do it. So before I started the radio th that year, I actually started doing another podcast on the Internet. And when I did that podcast, I was talking about faith. And I was talking about believing God for what you want God to do in your life and trust God to do it. And then not long after that, everything else was lined by the Spirit and be began to come into fruition. The reason why I'm here today still doing the Bible study, even when I don't feel well in my body, I'm still doing the Bible study. I had so much pain in my body since Friday. But I still keep doing the work of the ministry. Because I love ministry. I love talking about God. I love encouraging God's people. I love sharing my stories, how God changed my life, bringing me through cancer, two neck surgeries. I never knew what God was doing in my life until now. Because he continued to show me that he had a plan. And in the plan, I'm going to go through tests and trials and tribulations. But if I stand the test of the plan, everything will come to fruition what I've been praying for. I'm on my way to debt free again. And God is the one that's doing it. Because I trust in his word. I am like three quarters from being debt free because I trust God. If you say I can't save money, you're lying to yourself. I'm going to tell you why. I worked a job where I was only making $8 an hour and I had a car note. And me and my wife at the time, we faithfully had low-income jobs, but we paid our bills on time, plus saved money. And I opened an account with Chase Bank when I started doing security for St. Joseph, for St. Michael's Hospital in 2005. And the Holy Spirit says, put 10% to God and take another 10% to pay yourself in this account. That 10% I will put into that account every paycheck was only like $20. And I put that money in there faithfully and would never touch it. Then when I got tax return, we split our tax return. Put that in account. Before you know it, within three years, I saved up $10,000, which let me know I can do anything I put my mind to do. 
And you can do the same thing. No matter how much income you have, if you take 10%, give it to God, 10% to pay yourself, don't touch it, trust God, guess what God does? He multiplies your 10%. Because I had a bank that will also give you a bonus from using your money for their services. <coughs> Excuse me. And the more I trusted God, the more he added to it. So I tell you today, don't doubt God's ability to expand your territory, enlarge your borders. And in that territory, people don't realize this, it's your finances. Your finances in that territory. Your new house is in that, in that territory. Your marriage is in that territory. Your success is in that territory. Debt free is in that territory. Because when you trust God, God has the ability to break the curse off your mentality. The thing that holds you in the captivity where I can't do it because of this. Your excuses. God says there's no good excuse for having an excuse. You hear what I just said? There's no good excuse for having an excuse. When you claim the word says the just should live by faith. If God said it, you got to be crazy enough to believe it. That God will bless your endeavor in everything you set your heart to do. Because he's faithful to his children's cry. He said, I never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. That's debt free. That's being supplied by Jehovah Jireh. Jehovah El Shaddai. The God who's more than enough who always provides. Because he said, get ready for something really awesome. God is adding new rooms to your homes. Spread out. Expect, expect great expansion and extend your wings. You are getting ready to soar as an eagle and rise above negative situations. You're about to rise. You got to believe it. And check this out. You even got to see it. You can't see it with the natural eye. Because spiritual things are revealed by the spirit through the spiritual eye. Your natural eye cannot see what the spirit sees. But the spiritual eye can see everything God has for you. It says, get ready to extend. Extend your wings. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. I got to praise him on that one. That is awesome. What a mighty God. See, but they that wait on the Lord and be of good courage he shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. My God, my God. Glory to God in the highest. So you got to believe for yourself. Everything God has for you, it is for you. Then it says, burst at the seams. Burst. That means break open. Let it, something spew out of you so God can put something in you. You know one thing about Jesus? When Jesus made the statement, no man takes new wine and put it in old wine skin because he said it had burst at the seams. The anointing. God gives you a new anointing every day. He cannot put that new anointing in the old wineskin. So every day you have to be renewed like the eagle. Your mind has to be transformed. Be renewed in the spirit of your mind every day. 
through the word of God, by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you can burst at the seams. So you're going to burst at the seams with joy. Let there be an explosion of joy in your spirit. Those who have been stuck in the birth canal and feel they cannot come forth are going to be birthed into their destined places. That is so good. That is so good. You might feel that God has abandoned you. You might feel that it's hopeless. Your situation never going to change. You're going to always have the same old issues. Same old broken marriage. Same old messed up lifestyle. Jacked up relationship. Always living with the same old bad habits and negative mindset. You might feel that it's all over for you. God doesn't care about you. God going to pass you by. The songwriter says, Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. While the others are calling, do not pass me by. I want you to know tonight that God says, get ready to burst at the seams because joy is going to break out of you. He's going to give you a garment of praise in place of heaven and place in joy in place of sorrow, beauty for ashes. In other words, he's going to display himself through your life and your life events in crisis. Because when you get out of the way, God says, I'll get in the way. You might feel like you're stuck in the birth canal. You know how when a baby, when a woman trying to have a baby and the baby is turned upside down, it is, they call that a breach. So the doctor has to do something so they go to the baby to turn the baby to the baby. Baby turn the right way it needs to turn in order to be released. To come forth from the birth canal. God says today, your birth canal is about to burst at the seams to bring forth your promise. Everything that God has for you is yes and amen. And you're about to break forth into your destined place. What God has for you. He said places. There are many places that God has for you and he has for me. Many places God going to have you travel. Proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. But you got to get ready. Get ready. Make preparations. Get your mindset right. Get your attitude right. Get your heart right. So God can do what he wants to do in your life and through your life. Dear reader, be certain of this one fact. It is your season to break out from the old generational cycles that confined you. It is your season. It's a new season. It's a new day. A fresh anointing coming my way. A season of power, a season of prosperity. It's a new season coming my way. That's a song that Israel hope and wrote to let us know to have an expectation for the new season. You got to anticipate your change. Begin right now to anticipate your door to break through opening wide. That door that feels like it got you locked in and the key has been broken. You can't open the door. I remember times where I broke a key trying to get in the house. And because the key was broken, sometimes you could take a like a, a, a tweezers or something to try to grip that key to put it out the lock. But then most of the time, you don't call them the locksmith because they will have to come and do some type of work on that lock to release that lock to open up that door so you can get out of whatever you was confined in. You might feel like the door to your success has been blocked by the enemy. And it's like you're stuck 
and can't get out. But I come to tell you tonight, anticipate your door to breakthrough opening wide by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are entering into a season of enlargement as the plans of the enemy are being exposed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because I come to tell you, there's no devil in hell. No enemy has the ability, has the capability to keep you in lockdown where you can't break free into your destiny, the purpose God has for you, but you. But when you change your mindset, allow the Holy Spirit to unlock the door of your mind, to expand your territory in your mind, enlarge your border in your mind, guess what happens? Your heart opens wide. And God begins to put the master plan on the tablet of your heart. The vision he has given you, he writes it on your heart. When he write it there, he writes on there, success. Success. Because he deemed it to be so in your life. And everything he has, yes and amen. That's what God says about you tonight, my brother, my sister. You can have it. Everything that God has promised you is yours by faith. But you got to believe God to receive it. And watch God begin to manifest it in your life. And I guarantee it will surely come to pass. <laughs> Amen. We're going to stop right here. Next week we'll pick it up. The lockdown of hope deferred. The lockdown of hope deferred. We're going to talk about that next week. So you stay encouraged tonight and know that God has a word for all of us to change our destiny and change our lives for the better. I want it. I receive it. I'm trusting God to manifest it. And the devil can't stop me from getting what God has for me. And I refuse to even let myself get in the way of God to prevent it from coming to pass in my life. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this word tonight, O oh God, that the spirit of confinement is being exposed, O oh God. Every entrapment, every snare, every bait of the enemy, God, is being revealed by your Holy Spirit that we will be aware and understand what it is that's preventing us from moving forward in our destiny that is being broken right now in the mighty name of Jesus. And so God, you set us free in our minds and our hearts that you will be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. As usual, I'm going to pray a prayer for us tonight. If you are in a place of captivity in your heart and you feel like you're never going to be free, you read this one scripture here. And it says, wait one second. Glory to God. Okay, and it says here, Romans 12 and 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. That means changed by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is good and perfect will of God for you. So in this translation, it says, Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what the will of God is. So God wants you to be discerning what his will is for your life tonight. It's up to you to receive it, to believe it, to walk in it, to live in it, camp out in it, settle in it that God would manifest in your life. 
So it's always, you might be on tonight, you might be a backslide in your heart, you might be one that never walked with Jesus Christ, never known Jesus Christ, never accepted him as your Lord and Savior. The word says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. That means Jesus died on the cross for our sins, our iniquity. He was buried in the grave for three days and three nights and rose again on the third day. For that if thou shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised Jesus from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For the mouth confession is made the heart man believes unto righteousness. So you got to believe that by faith that Jesus took your sins, my sins upon himself, died, buried, and rose again to bring us new life and redemption. So that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You can receive this cleansing tonight by just praying this simple prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask the Lord to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins and be my Lord and Savior. I thank you, Lord God, for saving me. And I thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that simple prayer, you just got born again, and angels in heaven are rejoicing over one sinner that came back to the Lord, even the backslider who returned back to their first love. The Lord is rejoicing through his angels over your life tonight. Amen. So anyone got any questions or comments on here tonight? If you have any questions or comments, amen, amen. There's no question, no comments. We're going to go ahead and end right here tonight. Share this video with someone else. It will be on YouTube on my channel, Charles Emery. You can stream it on there anytime. All the lessons are on there that I have been doing the last uh, couple of years. All the lessons are on there. And um, I tell you, it's very enriching because I go back myself to listen to the lessons. And I thank God for allowing me to do this. So you can go to Charles Emery or Pastor Charles Emery on YouTube and you'll find the lessons of the night on there as well later on tonight. Also on my Facebook page, Charles Emery, I put it on there each week as well. When I, when I post on YouTube, I put it on my uh, Facebook page as well. So if you're able to share these videos, even subscribe to my channel. Even Google Meet, I'm still doing Google Meet. If anyone interested in joining Google Meet you know, in the near future, feel free to send me a, a message or, or just come on Click the link on the invite that I put the post on each week for the class. And I guarantee you be connected to the class, even through video chat, because I would love to have people come on video chat where we converse and talk back and forth with each other for the lessons. Therefore, I don't have to be the only one just talking constantly. So I invite you to join me on, e on either one of these platforms, or even both of them. If you have a computer, you can join Google Meet on there. Even on your phone, you can do Google Meet. So feel free to join me on that that link anytime uh, on Tuesdays, any one of these weeks we're doing these classes, and I guarantee you will be blessed. Amen. So you all have a great night on purpose and know that the Lord is good, his mercy endures forever, that you are blessed and highly favored of God. Walk in your victory, even walk in and your purpose for purpose because today is a great day to make a great day on purpose because God has smiled on you and given you another chance to be here one more time. If there's nothing else, God bless you, Cousin Jackie, Cornell, Pastor Denise, God bless you, Deborah, God bless you, Auntie Deborah and Denise, God bless you both tonight. I thank God for LaShonda always coming on each week as well. My sidekick. And um, I just pray you all continue to bless. Pray for the family. Pray for that family because their grandfather, which is Denise and Deborah's uh, father, is ill in the hospital at this time. We're going to definitely keep lifting him up. That God will heal and deliver him in his infirmity. Amen. So you all have a great night. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. Until next week, God bless you. Shalom. Amen. Oh, before I go, also, you can also send stars on here during the lesson. When we do the lesson that does add up to money for the ministry, you 
but like joining uh, stars, you just is a link on here as well. So send stars to and it says hit, to to see comments here. So you can send some stars on the lessons too. Anytime you feel like it, you will go back and uh, watch the lesson again. You can also send stars even while watching the lessons again. All right, you all be blessed tonight. Okay, thank you. Oh, pray for my niece who lost her son. Okay, well let's pray right now. My cousin Jackie. Gail, uh, her niece lost her son. We want to pray for her right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we don't neglect to pray for your children who are going through grief and sorrow at this moment, God. We ask that you comfort their broken hearts, bind their wounds tonight, oh God. Be their strength to get through this time of sorrow. Father, empower them with your spirit, God, to trust you even during the time of grief, oh God, to carry and bear their infirmity, God. As they're going through this time of pain and hurt, that you will be the glory and the lift of their head, oh God. I thank you, Lord God, that you're faithful even in this, oh God, to prepare their hearts for the homegoing service of the loved one, Father God, and bring them together, bring the families together, Father God, during this time, Father, where they need the, each other the most, that you, Father, will show yourself strong in their behalf, even bring salvation to those who are lost. They will come to know you, as Lord and Savior, and we thank you, God, that it is so according to the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You all be blessed tonight. Have a great night. Shalom.